Welcome back to Business Analytics for Decision Makers. Today, we're gonna to cover decision modeling. So our lesson objectives are first to answer the question, what is a model and how do we use it? The second question we're gonna address is what type of models are out there and what types of data do they use? The third question today's lesson should answer is, what are the steps of decision modeling? And these steps are very important because every decision model that you see should follow these three simple steps. So, what is a model? A model is really a simplification of reality. It's a representation of some aspect of the world. Why do we use models? Well, by simplifying the world, they enhance our understanding of how microcosms of it work, or little aspects of it that we're interested in function. They're a scientific method of approaching a problem, and what we mean by this is they're repeatable, so if someone else repeats the study that I did and they use the same inputs and they're developing the same model, they should be able to draw the same conclusions. The second thing that a model does for us is it helps reduce bias. And by stating our assumptions and writing down our inputs to a model, we have to be able to defend what's going in, which makes it much easier to defend and often removes a lot of personal biases. There are two major types of models out there. The first are deterministic models, and these are models that you're very used to using, most likely. So the inputs are known with certainty, and these are the math problems that you've been doing since childhood. So 6 divided by 2 times the quantity of 1 plus 2 is going to yield the same answer every time, and that should be 1. Right? So the resources in the business world to make a PC are the same every time. So if I'm producing a PC that has one hard drive, Every time I produce it, it should only use one hard drive as an input. If all of a sudden it was using zero or it using, was using two, I know there's some form of problem. In this course, multi-attribute decision making and linear programming are deterministic models that we're going to cover. The second type of model are probabilistic or stochastic models. And in these type of models, not all the data is known with certainty. So there's an element of chance in how the outcome is going to turn out. So for example, when you applied to college, you might have been above average, and this increases the likelihood of you being accepted, but it doesn't make it certain. In the course, the four operations research areas we're going to cover that are probabilistic or stochastic models are queuing, forecasting, decision analysis, and simulation. Models are fed by data, and there's two types of data. The first is qualitative data. So this is when something is measured by quality. It's difficult to capture with numbers. So when my family is arguing about where we should go to dinner the following night, and we're discussing restaurant atmosphere, we're typically using our opinions. It's not something that's easily to justify why the restaurant I want to go to has a better atmosphere than say my mom's or my dad's. Ultimately, it'll probably boil down to who's paying. The next measure is quantitative data. And quantitative data is something that is easily measured by numbers. So if you wanted to know the number of customers entering your store in a given day, I could sit out there with a clipboard and we could figure out the exact number that are coming. In kindergarten, you were probably first introduced to quantitative data by being shown a jar full of jelly beans. And you are asked to estimate how many jelly beans are in that jar. And there is a correct answer to this because ultimately we could take those jelly beans out and count exactly how many there were there. Use models every day and it's become increasingly apparent for you as we go through this course. So let's take driving to work as our scenario. And this is something that most of us have thought about at some length. What time do you need to leave home to be at work end time? You don't want to be too early because then you'll be sitting there with nothing to do, but you also don't want to be late. And what you took was this middle school physics equation. That distance is equal to the rate you're able to travel times the time of travel. And what you did was you rearranged it and said, hey, the time it's going to take me to get to work is equal to the distance that I have to drive to work divided by the rate I'm able to go. So if I said the distance to work was 15 miles and the rate at which you were able to travel was 100 kilometers per hour, you could solve this equation, right? So time equals 15 miles divided by 100 kilometers per hour. And then all of a sudden you're coming to a screeching halt because your units don't align, right? And you caught this mistake and what you realized was, hey, I need to translate that 100 kilometers per hour into miles per hour and make that conversion. 
So 100 kilometers per hour is 60 miles per hour, almost on the nose. And now you're ready to solve. So time is 15 miles divided by 60 miles per hour, which is a quarter of an hour or 15 minutes. How am I going to use this? Well, if I need to be at work by 8 a.m., I need to be in the car traveling by 7.45, right? So you've just used your first decision analysis model. So what are the steps to developing a decision model? The first step is formulation, and this is where we translate the problem scenario into a mathematical model. And it begins with defining the problem. Once we have the problem defined, we can develop the decision model or select the decision model we need to use. There are two elements to most decision models. The first are variables, and these are measurable quantities that can vary, so we can control them. The second are parameters, and parameters are measurable quantities that are inherent to the problem. So in our scenario, we define the problem as needing to get to work on time. And the decision model we we're going to use was our time equals our distance divided by our rate. The variables to this are going to be our rate we can travel. So I can probably drive a little faster, or if weather impacts me, maybe I'm going to drive a little slower. Whereas a parameter in this model will be the distance to work, so the 15 miles. There's nothing I can do to change the route that I'm driving to work and make it shorter if I'm already taking the shortest possible route. So now we're done with formulation. The next step is to solve it. So we take our mathematical expression and formulation, we've collected our data, and we're going to find the answer. When we develop the solution, right, we're going to need to manipulate our model to get there. So this is either reformatting the equation as we did here, and then plugging in the data, and then allowing it to chug through to get us to the answer. So in our case, time equals distance divided by rate, 15 miles divided by 60 miles per hour is a quarter of an hour, or 15 minutes. Once we have an answer, what we want to do is test the solution. Does this solution make sense? So if it gave back that it was going to take 30 milliseconds to get to work, my previous experience is going to tell me that something's gone wrong in the modeling or in how I've done the computation. Whereas if I see 15 minutes and this aligns very closely to what I think the average drive would take me of this distance, then I'm probably on the right path. So now that we're done solving the problem, we need to interpret our answer. What are the implications of the results? One of the things that's very important to do at this stage is conduct sensitivity analysis. And sensitivity analysis allows us to analyze what would happen if the scenario was slightly different than expected. For example, what if construction was occurring on the way to work? This might cause me to drive at a slower rate of speed, which is gonna require me to take more time to get there. Or if there was snow on the road, and so in sensitivity analysis, we're going to vary the different estimated parameters, and we're going to test the outcomes under a variety of states. So we're going to have a very robust solution by the time that we're ready to enact it, which is the final step, right? So we want to implement the results. We're going to take that solution, we're going to use it, and we're going to make sure that it performs as we had expected it to. And if it doesn't perform, then we're going to have to go back to the first step and look at our formulation and our initial assumptions, and then step through the process again. So what are some of the possible problems with developing a decision model, or challenges that can occur? And it can start right at the beginning when we're defining the problem. There can be conflicting viewpoints within your organization, or there may be other stakeholders that will be impacted, and everyone's going to want to argue about how the problem should be defined. What exactly should we be looking at? Once the problem's defined, we have to fit it to a textbook model. And it's often quite challenging to fit a real-world situation with all of its intricacies into a clean and cut dry model that's mathematical. The other challenge with model development is you don't want your model to be too complex to exceed the understanding of the others, in which case they may not want to listen to the results because they don't understand what's going on. This is fitting a square peg through a round hole. Not easy. Once you've got the model selected, you have to acquire data to feed it. And this can be challenging because the data may not exist, or it may be too costly to acquire it, or the data you have may not be very valid. And so people are going to question your results because the data that went into your model isn't that great. Once you've acquired the data, you need to develop a solution. And if you only produce one solution, it's very likely that your boss is going to challenge you on it. 
the situation may have changed, the exact solution you're proposing could be infeasible. So it's very important to have conducted that sensitivity analysis we talked about so that you have a robust range of solutions, all of which are probably better than the current state. Once you've got your solution, what you need to do now is implement it. And this is winning over management and user support to make that change that you want to recommend. So what are the three steps to developing a decision model? The first is formulation, and this is translating the problem scenario into a mathematical model. So in our early example where I'm driving to work, this is what time do I need to leave home to be at work at time? I took the equation distance equals rate times time as my model. The second step was to solve it. So I'm going to take that mathematical expression and rearrange it, collect my data, and get an answer. So time equals distance divided by rate from our earlier scenario. So 50 miles divided by 60 miles per hour is a quarter of an hour of 50 minutes. The third and final step is interpretation. So what are the implication and results? So in this case, it means that I needed to leave home at 745 to be at work at 8 a.m. I look forward to seeing you next time, and that's the end of this lesson.